Hey guys, so I first want to give a shout out to Noah Camp Design. He he actually created this and I was like, hmm, I wonder if we can also do this inside Blender. And well, of course we can because you can do everything. But yeah, he I think he made it in Cut 4D. And yeah, these things are a little bit easier in that program. Um, but we're gonna use a lot of modifiers and let's just jump straight into it. Uh, we don't need that one, we're gonna delete it. <laughs> and let's add a cylinder. So it has 32 vertices, that works good. And I'm gonna rotate it for 90 degrees around the x-axis, so it lays like this. And I'll put my screencast keys on for you guys, so you can see at the bottom left what I'm typing. I wanna get rid of these faces here. And actually, I'm gonna duplicate this, so go into ed uh, like object mode. Shift D, you can duplicate it, go into edit mode and do one, two, three, four. Oh, this is a bit too much, wait, hold on, one less, yeah, delete this. Cool, select everything, then extrude and scale about every axis except the Y axis. So scale, shift, Y. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, something like this. So this will be our sausage and this will be our bread around it. And I will show you very quick, if we put a array modifier on here, that zero, one, that it works a bit weird because the Y axis, this should be the Y axis and it is actually going on the Z axis. And that is because we did not apply our rotation. So if you do control A and then do rotation, you can see that um, it jumps to the point where we want it to go over and that is the Y axis. Right, so y axis should be one as well for the sausage. Y axis one zero. Cool. So we can just change the count whenever we want, make like a long sausage, right? And also, a subdivision surface does a lot. You can see what happens though if we put a subdivision surface on our cylinder here, and this is because we still have these faces. Uh, let me show it in solid mode uh, with this, these ones here. So if you delete the faces and also on this point and now look at it, you can see that it gets nice and smooth everywhere where we want it. Cool. So this is our bread around it. This is a sausage and now we need some mustard, right? So I'm actually gonna just hide the error modifiers for a second. Go into seven, which is our top view. And I'm actually gonna select this and duplicate it from our sausage. Then click on P and separate the selection. I do this because I want the same length. So if we select this and subdivide it, you can see that we get a little vertex in the middle. I'm gonna put this vertex till it reaches like this edge here. And these ones I'll put till these. So it's time to subdivide it one or two times more and then move these around the Z axis, GZ, so it reaches The sausage. Cool. So this is of course only a line and we need a, like a nice thick mustard, right? It needs to be round. So what you can do is if you go to uh, select our mustard, which we actually can call, let's, let's call it mustard. You can go to object, convert to, and then curve from mesh. So now this is a curve and what we can do with curves is we can select it and you have this new little tab here. So what you can do with this is you can bevel, like go into geometry and extrude like a circle of this, which is a bevel and you just choose the depth and you can choose the resolution, how much you want it. But I think around four might be good. And now you can see that we can choose this. So uh, I want it nice and yeah, this seems okay. Maybe a bit less thick. 
something like this. So if you have your thickness, you can still move some stuff around. So um, we can like, let's say scale these ones a little bit up or move them here. So we have a little bit more of a softer form, but we need to change these anyways, because they in the array modifier, if we put an array now, you can see that they will never match up. See? So what we are going to do is we're going to actually convert this again and then the other way around, mesh from curve. And now we can edit this ourselves. So I want to put a subdivision surface in here. So I just have a little bit more control for like nicer forms. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this and make sure it will fit together with what we had. So rotate X, uh, rotate set, I mean, here, and then rotate X a little bit. And if you're sure it is in the place where you want it to be, scale uh, Y zero. Now it just all is the same size. Cool. And you can always, you know, move these a little bit so we have this form in here. And we can actually delete this part, cool, and create a mirror. So if we have a mirror, do it around the y-axis. So now these two are exactly the same and they will um, match up also in an array. And that is why we need to do this technique, of course. So um, let's go zero, this is one, now you can see that wherever we go, it just keeps matching up, right? Which we want. Um, we, we do see these ones in here, the cutoffs. So if we apply the mirror with our clipping um, like selected, you can see that those already get nice and smoothed out. And for these ones, we can actually do a merge and choose for when you want to let them merge. So now, when you ever apply it, you can see that they also get smoothed out. But we don't want to apply it yet, okay? It's just be okay with it being a little bit blocky now. But you can check it with just clicking on apply and it gets nice and round. Right? Cool. So if everything works like that, I think it's time to save it for you guys. So make sure you save this and we'll go further in the next part.